Welcome back to another video. The Brody Bunch, uh, our lives have changed quite a bit since the last video you saw. And if you followed social media a bit, you kind of know what's going on, and especially from the title of this video. So we are now uh, sort of in the fight with Kendall, uh, fighting some cancer and a big tumor that she has. This week we are here for a stem cell collection. Which sounds kind of crazy, but I will do my best to try to explain throughout today's episode and uh, kind of show you what that process looks like, sort of step by step and how Kendall does throughout it. So, so long story short is that uh, right around Christmas time, Kendall was diagnosed with having a rare cancer called neuroblastoma. And uh, we've been through several rounds of chemo now. She had a very large mass in her abdomen um, and it is responding well to the chemo. So we've been through two rounds of chemo um, and we are and various other scans and tests and that sort of thing. Um, Brandy and I have been on the fast track of trying to learn what all of this is and what all this means. And we've been faced with you know several different decisions and uh, we're we're just trying to take it all in and trying to make the best decisions we can. Kendall is doing really, really well. She's doing great. Uh, we just have a little bit of a, a long, bumpy road ahead of us. But we're excited to push through and just kind of get past this and make it a thing of the past. Of course, it's something that we'll have to deal with for many years to come, but uh, getting, getting cured is phase one of this thing. So anyways, I've got a full podcast that kind of gives the whole breakdown on whole how this whole thing unraveled um, and what we know about it kind of up to this point. Um, so I'll leave a link up here or down in the description below. You can go check out that whole episode. Starting to get a little dark outside, but so here's what's going on. We are here for the stem cell collection, which uh, is the following process. She's gonna get hooked up to a machine and she's gonna have a, a catheter uh, with two lines. Uh, there's an in and an out. So she will have blood flowing out into a machine that's got a centrifuge. It's gonna spin that blood and separate and it's going to collect the stem cells. Now this is all my understanding of it and it's a very probably generalized understanding. So once it's collected those stem cells separately, it's gonna take and push her blood back into the inside of that line and it will circulate for about three hours is my understanding and then they will do a count or the machine does a count or whatever i don't really know how it works but they want to see a count of 15 million stem cells so that will let them know that they have enough so the idea with collecting these is that they've got good clean stem cells that they can use in the future if they need to um, our treatment protocol calls for a stem cell transplant so um, they will sort of, they'll have to reinfuse these into her later if we opt to go that route. Um, a lot of our treatment plan is kind of up in the air based on some of our own personal decisions we're trying to figure out and look at uh, and whatnot. So either way, it's a really good idea that we're doing the stem cell collection because they can be frozen and then stored indefinitely. So if we ever needed them again in the future, they would be there for her uh, and that's a really big benefit to her. So anyways. Um, tonight they're just we're kind of hanging out they've done some lab work already uh, determined that she's gonna need a platelet transfusion tonight which is no big deal it's like a little yellow bag and that'll just kind of go through an IV drip through into her port they want to bring those platelet levels up before they do any of this stuff tomorrow and then tomorrow they'll do some labs again to see if her blood count is where they want it to be before they start the stem cell collection. So we're just kind of hanging out tonight and uh, see what tomorrow brings. Kendall wasn't able to get her uh, treatment, to, it's not even a treatment, the stem cell collection today because some of her blood counts weren't high enough. So we're unhooked, we're sort of free for the day to go roam around, do things, good job hitting the button. Um, so we are going to go pick up some Chick-fil-A that we ordered from DoorDash downstairs and then gonna go sit outside I think eat lunch and then go to the atrium playroom that'll be fun
thank God for the modern delivery services like DoorDash because the cafeteria food really is not great. Was that us? So we DoorDash a lot of stuff. Um, if you ever have somebody in the hospital for extended periods of times, um, sending them a DoorDash gift card is like a great idea. And y'all have a good day, okay? Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Here, take that. So the nice thing is that because we're not here for any particular treatments, uh, Kendall's able to kind of get up and, and get out and do things. The downside is, there you go. So the nice thing is that because Kendall's not here for any particular treatments, we're able to kind of get out of the room and do some things while we're kind of waiting for these blood counts to come up. Um, so hopefully they're up high enough tomorrow. The downside is because her blood counts are still so low from the chemo treatments uh, from last week, uh, she's got to wear a mask. She's like very vulnerable to catching motorcycles. She's very vulnerable to catching uh, an infection, you know, any kind of cold, whatever, bacteria, anything like that. She just has no immune system. so. She's got to wear a mask when we're kind of like walking through the hospital and that sort of thing and we go out to public places, but uh, I'll take that for sure. Other times we do have to walk around with the IV pole, which is fine, it's just like less than ideal. It's just like one more thing to drag around and get in the way and that sort of thing. Mm. Did you guys notice this view? Look at this, it's great. What do you think about the view? Pretty. Yeah? I like your hat. I like coming down to the atrium because you walk down this back hallway. You feel like you're sneaking around the back of the hospital when you're in here. It's like this unfinished part of the hospital, even though they tried to make it look finished with some pictures. But like, that's the back of the cafeteria right there. I feel like I'm snooping around and I shouldn't be. Are they open? 10 to 12, yeah, they're opened up. Check this place out. So this is the atrium. It's really, really cool place for the kids. Lots of activities to do while this table turns. Um, there's toys for them to play with. There's arts and crafts, obviously. There's other games and things for them to play with. There's an outside play area with a playground. Uh, air hockey, which Kendall always loses at. No, I always win. Just kidding, she usually wins. She's pretty good at air hockey. I'm gonna have to step up my game for sure. What are we doing today? What is this, are these like little sponge paints? Oh, fancy. What are you gonna make me? You got all the colors you want? You got like doubles of things. We need to get you some other There's colors. Some of them are broken. Oh. Okay. Have at it. Nice. You know what Nine Line means? Nine Line, interestingly enough, so the shirt that I'm wearing, my friends over at Nine Line, is a military term for, uh, it's a call for help for a medevac. So that's why they've got the helicopter in their logo. So this is the line, so the nine line is a call for help. <laughs> Here you go, Luz. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you are trying to cheat. Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Thank you. 
very much. <laughs> so it's tied now? Nine to nine. Bring it on, sister. Next point wins. They're cheating. Kendall just got recruited out into the hallway to play some trouble. She's going to wreck them. This is Kendall. Kendall's tea. Something's hard, isn't it? Five. Oh, so close. Does that mean I'm out? Or no, that? six. No, six. Okay. <laughs> but you are out. Yay. Oh, you got the move. Oh, oh yeah. Five. One, two, three. No, wait. What did you get? A two? <laughs> a two, you're right. So the nurses were winning at first, but... <laughs> Things are starting to become a little even now. <laughs> Kendall's uh, starting to bring the heat. All right. <laughs> One. All right, this is it, BT. I feel in my bones. <sighs> Gotta get together, T. You're up, Kendall. Kendall. I feel it. She's gotta get a good one. Three. Ooh, is she bumping? Oh, wait, no. I thought she was green. Nice. Get one and see. <laughs> Things are getting serious out here. You gotta go move on. Wow. Oh. Oh. Okay. Coming out. Coming out. Oh. Okay, who's Milk it gonna that be? One so you can... oh, oh yeah, yeah, smart. Look at you helping T. Nice. What are you gonna do? Hmm. Nice. Six for you. If she get another yeah, you get six, to go again, girl. Oh yeah. Get a if I was you, I would just do like that. <laughs> <laughs> Try and make it go six again. <laughs> I, did it. I do that at home, but they don't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> So another thing we've been working on for the past couple of days or week or so, I guess, is a promo video for uh, a fundraiser. So my best friend, Mark, who's like my childhood best friend, is boxing in a charity boxing match. It's called Battle on the Bricks. It's here in Charleston, South Carolina on April 6th. And the funds that get raised are going to go to MUSC Children's Hospital as well as the College of Charleston athletic fund. So we just put out this video last night and uh, it's already raising some money. Let's see this. Here's the website battle on the bricks. Let's see where Mark is at. Oh, top fundraiser, Mark Hodston at uh, 8,600 bucks we've raised already. Check that out. That's awesome. And it looks like he's the top fundraiser so far. So uh, we want to keep that momentum going. Obviously, if you feel so inclined, uh, I will leave a link in the description where you can click and donate money in Mark's name to kind of help back him in his efforts. And again, those funds go to kids like Kendall that are here at MUSC fighting for their lives. So it would really mean a lot to us. And you, listen, a dollar, five dollars, like anything you can do would really be appreciated. You know, it's kind of funny, the entire vibe here at the hospital is completely different from when we first got admitted here just before Christmas, because we're at MUSC, which is a university teaching hospital and you know, school was out for Christmas break. So there weren't all the students and stuff here. Uh, and we were just learning of Kendall's diagnosis. So 
our minds were just completely obliterated and very emotional, as you can imagine. And um, then she also had a respiratory virus, which meant she was in isolation and couldn't really leave her room and do things. She was also very sick and getting chemo treatments and everything just sort of sucked. But you know, now that we're kind of getting into the swing of things, we're more comfortable. Um, that's kind of lifted some weight off of our shoulders. We have all of the information about her situation that we need to know. So we're not wondering and thinking of the worst and all these types of things. So that has been huge, but school's back in session. There's students like traveling or in and out in the hallways, like things are popping out there and you know, having a good time out in the hallways playing games. She doesn't have this respiratory virus anymore, so she's off of this sort of isolation. So she's able to go out in the hallways and roam around and eat lunch downstairs and play those games and, and have a good time. So it's a completely different experience being here uh, now with a lot of things sort of under our belt and, and that sort of thing um, than it was before. So it definitely, definitely makes it a lot easier, that's for sure. One of our daily chores is to change the bed sheets. And of course the hospital supplies us with bed sheets uh, to do this every day. But there is a family that donates what they call fun sheets, which are like not your typical hospital sheets. They're like really cool, fun, much softer, cool patterns, fun designs for the kids. Uh, hang on Kendall, put those over here. Um, and then we get to keep them which is really cool. So we can wash them, we can put them back on the bed, we can wash them, bring them back with us, uh, whatever we wanna do. And they have laundry facilities up here uh, on this floor. So people like us who st tend to stay weeks at a time, you bring you know five or six days worth of clothes and then you can wash them. Yep, we'll take all that off. Yep, Kendall's becoming Kendall's becoming very good at this now. Even she can pitch in and help. It's just the little things like sheets that you don't think about but make a big difference that are just the sort of boring and mundane but um, give you a little bit more of those creature comforts from home that people don't think about. Being here in this situation in the hospital for day after day, week after week has been a very humbling experience to say the least. Um, and it just gets you thinking about ways that you can give back and you can donate and you can help and you can support. Um, and there's just so many ways to do it and anything, anything helps. All right, it's gotten a little bit darker outside as you can tell, Kendall and I are getting around, getting ready to sit down and watch Cops because that's what we do at night before bed and we enjoy Cops very much. Uh, the plan for tomorrow morning is sort of, and this is the plan, and I say plan loosely because nothing around here ever goes to plan. It always gets changed. But the idea is that they'll come in at 6 a.m. They will draw her blood, do some lab work. It'll take maybe an hour or so for them to get some of the counts back that they're looking for. So they're looking for a particular marker in the blood CD34, I think. Like a marker in <laughs> Not like a marker marker. They're looking for a particular marker in her blood. I think it's CD34, if I remember right. They want to see that count above 10. This morning hers was at an 8. And then they want to see her total white blood count be about 1,000 or higher. And this morning hers was at 300. So hopefully both of those are high enough tomorrow morning where they can continue on with the process of the stem cell collection. <laughs> I know, but your white blood cell counts, when they start going up, they go up really fast, especially because that's why you've been getting those shots every day. It's gonna help boost those up really quickly, which is the prime time that they want to do the collection as those things are really ramping up. So um, we're, in the, we're in the right window. That's the idea. Uh, and if we get the green light, they will take her downstairs, they'll put her to under for about 20 minutes, they'll place this dual line catheter in her neck, uh, and that's what will hook up to the machine. It'll have an in and an out, as I sort of explained previously, and she'll have to sit there for about three hours while it does its thing. So, that's the idea. I'll see you guys, you know, early in the morning. We'll see what shakes out and see if this plan comes together. Good morning.
uh, last night was it was a long night. There was a lot going on. Someone in here every you know, hour or two. Um, Kendall ended up getting two platelet transfusions, but they did lab checks and everything looks good. So they're going to proceed on today. The operating room team is headed this way to come get her to install the little catheter situation. And then we will get set up and uh, get going with the stem cell collection. Um, good morning. How you feeling? Good. Yeah? Did you get any sleep last night? You did? A little bit. I definitely didn't get much sleep at all, but I'm glad you're feeling well. Okay. We're supposed to get up for a while because my back hurts. Yeah, she did have a lot of back pain last night, which uh, was a very odd and interesting situation. She ended up having to get some pain medicine and that sort of thing. Don't know where it came from or why it was painful. Um, but it was, so that had us up for a while. All right, they're gonna take you down to the operating room in just a few minutes, get the little lines in your neck, and then we'll get you hooked up to that mach machine. Shouldn't. They said it might just be annoying because they're gonna be like flopping around next to your head. Around. It's just gonna be like, like how you know how you have this line sticking out right here? It's gonna be like that, but coming out right here, so it's just gonna be like flopping around. So they said it could be annoying. Did I have you worried for a second? Yes. <laughs> I think you'll be just fine. All right, we're in the pre-op room now. Getting ready to go back. Got your gown on. How are you feeling? Good. Yeah? Give me a thumbs up. And you have to wear this. Yes, I get to wear the hairnet and a little bunny suit. And a mask. I'm super excited about it. I won't look as good as you, though. If you want a burrito, it's a burrito. If you want a sandwich, it's a sandwich. Chipotle yeah. burrito, specifically. Pretty good. It doesn't really work if you see. Ready? This is the machine, and uh, so they've got a couple units of blood here, and it's going to run through, and they're going to prime all of these lines. It goes up and goes around this guy, and then it goes down into a drum inside. That's the centrifuge that spins around inside of there, and then it will flow blood back to her, and then the stem cells will collect into this bag right here. Once they get it all set up and going, I'll show it to you at that point, but it's pretty wild. All right, so here's what's going on. She's hooked up here. We've got a line coming out, going into the machine, spinning up, and then there's blood going back. And then this is where the stem cells are starting to separate. And you can see it here, they'll come through this tube and then they will come up and collect into that bag. They can see the stem cells coming through this tube here and they check it against this gauge and then they can make small adjustments here. What is that? Is that like a, a This rate? is what we like it to be between those two colors. Got it. So if you look up here, um, if you go down, it goes darker and if you go up, it goes... Lighter? It's like, yeah, if you want to make it lighter, you go up and if you want to make it darker, you and go And what down. does the color mean? More stem cells or less stem cells? Or? So you have your red cell layer. When uh -huh. this spins, if you look in here, you can see... Like you see how it's dark at the bottom and then yellow? Yeah. The dark is the red cells, because your red cells are the heaviest. Then your white cell layer is on top of the red cells, and then on top of that is your plasma, like the, the liquidy part of your blood. Got it. Like, you know, if you get a leak, it's like that yellow sticky, yeah. that's the yeah. plasma. So the white cell layer is thin between it. So we're trying to get in the right part of the white cell layer to where the stem cell weight, where the stem cells live. Got it. So if you go too light, you're high to the plasma, and if too you go low. too dark, you're hitting and you're sucking in your red cells too. Got it, and you're working. okay. So we try to, you know, get the sweet spot right yeah, in between. But see, like when it's doing this, it's not real. Like those dots all over, uh -huh. it's not really running smooth yet. All right, that's a wrap. We have collected all the rest of the stem cells that we need.
after our second collection. This ran for what, just over an hour or so today? Um, 80 minutes. 80 minutes. So now at this point, you have to return some of this blood back to her out of the machine, is that? Yes, yep. Basically like a plastic strip. Yeah, it's like that thin yeah. plastic thing that uh -huh. goes around the drum. And it's just interesting how the cells just, with the weight of the, you know that ride you go on and you're sucked to the wall? <laughs> yeah. That's what I describe this thing as. This is where the blood and like that collection screen yeah. where it was red and yellow, the red cells would be here and you'd have the lighter cells. It mirrors. So as it's spinning, uh -huh. that's it's actually separating the layers yep, in here. Yep, exactly. What we were doing with the up and down. Interesting. Your red cells are heavier. So you literally would have a redder layer. Then you have the white, the stem cells. Then you'll have plasma and a lot of that platelets are there. So it literally separates you okay, honey? You can come out. And this part, yeah. the plasma comes out here, and this is where we're doing our collection there. That's wild. Isn't it? What happened if you use that? Yeah. You have to use this or the high dose, which is yellow. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like, it's in the yeah, 500 it's, units. Yeah, we have the 500 unit yellow ones but up here. I know they gave us yesterday. Because we would never send anybody home with a high dose. Can we stop at the gas station? Yeah, what do you want? You want a Jolly Rancher? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, you! 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 H